I want to introduce to you this woman that I've heard speak before, and she's eloquent in so many ways. I want to get that out right now. Dr. Christy Hagens is a psychologist by training, a public speaker, an educator, retreat facilitator, and a writer working on her first book focused on healing and wholeness. Wow. She's a woman of faith, and recent experiences have confirmed for her the power of spirituality. She is committed to helping all people, and especially people of African ancestry and marginalized groups, remember the truth of who they are. Beloved children of the Most High, in which nothing is impossible. She notes, her greatest accomplishment is being the mother of two amazing daughters. Please put your hands together and welcome to Sax Soul Talks, Dr. Christy Hagen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hello. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Well, it is an honor to be here in front of you all this afternoon. I want to thank you for sticking around. I want to thank my friends for coming. And I really want to start first with just thanking and honoring Mother, Father, God. Um, and honoring as well my mother, who made her transition almost a year ago my father and all my ancestors, all the people that have paved the ground and, um, for me to stand here before you today. So I affirm that this time is blessed and all is in divine order. And today what I hope to do is just share with you a little bit about kind of my journey, my experience, and I hope that you will be touched in some way because I know that I will be transformed by our connection and by this experience that we have together. And I want to tell you a little bit about, does anybody know my title? I want you to hear it because hopefully it'll get you inspired to pay attention for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> it's learning to let go. Rainbows, airplanes, and miracles. So learning to let go. Rainbows, airplanes, and miracles. So let me tell you a little bit about what I've learned and how I've learned it. So just a few months ago, November 30th, 2017, I was free falling from an airplane. And yes, it was by choice. <laughs> I chose to jump out of a perfectly good plane. It was my 50th birthday, and I had always wanted to go skydiving. It was a bucket list kind of dream for me. So as long as I could remember, I always wanted to do that. And when I clicked the pay button to confirm that dive just a couple days before, I had no idea how much my life would change and be transformed, even in just those two days and then afterwards. As I prepared to skydive that morning, I was feeling all kinds of ways, right? When the harnesses were getting put on, and I was told the instructions about what to do, and the plane started to ascend. Lots of things, fear, excitement, worry, doubt, awe, wonder. Can you imagine? Yeah. And during the actual jump, during the free fall, I looked across the horizon and it was incredible. It was incredible. I saw the limitlessness of the sky. I could see for miles and miles and miles and miles. <coughs> and I saw, and it hit me then, just how amazing this world is and how tiny I am. The patterns in the field, they looked like a patchwork quilt to me. And I realized I was 30,000 feet up in the air. Yikes. And then I got it. I really got it. And I started praying. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me in the video. I start praying. But it wasn't a prayer of, oh my God, I'm 30,000 feet up. I'm about to hit the ground. It was, oh my God, look at this, right? Look at this blessing. And I started praying for everything and everyone and giving thanks and praising everything that I could in that moment. I realized that there was a force that was so much greater than me as I was falling from heaven in some ways and the gravity was pulling me to earth. 
it led me to an awareness that there is something so much bigger than we can possibly imagine in our tiny little pea brains. And as I let go that day, it was particularly ironic because just two days before, remember when I clicked, yes, I'm going to jump, I said yes, I chose that. Just hours after I said yes to that, my job, my job said no to me. What am I saying? I got let go from my job, from a nonprofit that I had been working at for over five years, and I was like, Ugh. oh my god. That same fear, that anxiety that I felt when I was skydiving was what I felt when I heard that news two days before. I cried and I wondered, oh my god, what am I going to do now? I'd never not worked. But I also had this sense as I drove away from the office like, I'm free. Oh my God, I'm free. <laughs> like, I can do whatever it is my soul desires. That All those things that I'd been saying, no, I don't have time, I can't do it. Like, voila, I have time to write the book. I have time to connect with my kids. I have time to do this public speaking. I can do this. And then I got that next God wink. You know those signs that we get when you notice Something's happening when we actually pay attention and spirit shows up and shows out. So with an hour of getting laid off as I was driving away, I got an email. I got an email from the clinical director of the psychology department where I'd taught the year before and it said, hey Christy, do you still want to teach next term? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I said yes. There's always options. God is always showing up. So I let God show the way. Who, who knew as well that even a month after that, I'd get another call from another colleague saying, hey, at a different university, do you want to teach part-time? Yes, mm -hmm. right? That other opportunities to rent office space at a wellness center to potentially um, participate in public speaking events would come just like this when I chose to say yes. So as I jumped that day out of the plane, I prayed to let go of the worry about the job, and look what came. I also, though, I had to let go of the worry and anxiety I was feeling because just the day before, so the day after I got laid off, guess what? My owner of the house that I was renting said, huh, I need for you to move in three months. Yikes, I have no job. I have no steady income, I have no pay stub. What am I gonna do? So, I worried too about how am I gonna pack up all this stuff? All that was on my heart. So I did the only thing I could do when I jumped. I let that go too. I prayed for a beautiful home, a safe and comfortable sacred place for me and my daughters. And what a journey it's been, right? I've had to prove in some ways my worth trying to confirm my ability to be financially responsible when I didn't have a pay stub. Feeling the weight of being a single black woman, a mother without a job, and all the judgments that come with that, despite having a PhD. So although part of me was scared and felt like giving up, I wanted to let somebody else handle this. Maybe I can just go live with my brother. I wasn't to be. So I let go, I turned it over, I jumped. I knew, just like in the past, God would have my back, God would find a way, and spirit would and does continue to show up right on time. So as I prayed and trusted, I cried and released. I began to intentionally choose things that I knew would support me that were good for me. So reluctantly, I started looking for a place to live. I reached out to friends, asked for support and help. I connected with my family. I made sure I kept walking every day. I found a walking partner and buddy. Stayed committed to my gratitude calls and meditating. And I dove even deeper into my spiritual community. I asked God, make things plain for me. Help me to hear, to see, to know what's mine to do. I wanted to remember the truth of who I was. And as I did, that things unfolded, right? As I jumped, things unfolded. Doesn't that happen when we begin to listen to that inner voice inside? I know and realize that I didn't have to wait for that rug to get pulled out from under me. The loss of the job, the um, having to move, because 
in my spirit, I knew. I had, my gut was telling me it's time to move from this job. Things aren't safe here. In summer 2017, I was beginning to talk about, maybe we should move. This house is too big. Let's start saving for college. So I had to let go as well of the forgiveness of the shitting on myself. You know how we can do. So when I landed on the ground from that dive, so much had transpired for me, right? And in me, I had moved from fear and doubt and worry and concern to trust, to letting go, to loving and blessing everything, everyone. And by the time I made it to the ground and I was hugging my friends who were supporting me, I was fully connected with being grateful for my life, with possibilities, with hope and love, despite the unknown. So turning 50, losing my job, having to move quickly, unexpectedly, and even celebrating the loss of my mother for the first time over the holidays, it just provided an opening for me, an opportunity for me to choose to grow in ways that I couldn't even imagine. I'm still learning to let go. So what I didn't tell you at the beginning is I grew up traditional Christian. I went to private Christian schools that were predominantly white from kindergarten through high school. But my beliefs have expanded over the years, more spiritual understanding. So I've learned a lot about faith and about being grateful. I believe now that we are spiritual beings having human experiences, that we are born perfect, whole and complete, worthy and deserving of nothing but love. I believe the power that holds the very stars in the universe, that keeps the earth rotating in the sky, lives and moves and has its being in us. I believe that this internal essence that it manifests in all these beautiful ways in the skin that we live in, right? I believe that our gender, our race, our culture, our sexual orientation makes us special and unique. It's how our spirit shows up in the world. And there's nothing inherently wrong with any of us, but I believe our society teaches us different. I think over time we come disconnected from this truth. We look outside of ourselves for material things, for external things to make us whole, right? The car, the right house, the money, the relationship, the perfect body, all of that. And certain things, skin color, religion, can be judged. And so I intentionally, I became a victim of some of this thinking. I realized that, gosh, my job, my house, my financial security at that, that point in my life, just a few months ago, they had become very important. I was wondering, what am I going to do without this stuff? I remember, too, being a teen, a younger black woman, and struggling with other issues around what it meant for me to be a black woman, wanting to be lighter, wanting my hair to be straighter, wanting to fit in. I intentionally internalized messages that I received that made me doubt myself. I remember a friend, my very best friend, a beautiful young white woman, later told me that she felt uncomfortable in my home because of all the black images that were posted on the walls and the figures. And right, I remember another friend going to her home. Her father was an administrator in my middle school, and he always told those jokes. Remember the just a Jewish guy, a black guy, and a Pola. I was like, what do you do? when you're 12 years old. So when I jumped from that plane on my 50th birthday, I realized that my sense of self, my sense of self, my self-esteem was on rocky ground. It was different a few months ago, but I was struggling. But my faith, the seeds that had been planted so long ago, that hope began to grow in me. I realized I could choose a different way. I could choose the way that I was thinking. I could trust that my parachute would open. And I could let that inner part of me guide me and direct me. And I remember that day about hope. So let me tell you a quick story about my mom and tie this all together. Remember I told you at the beginning my mom passed away about a year ago. <coughs> at the age of 85, beautiful, strong woman. So it was February 28, 2017, and she'd had a long bout of illness. She struggled with COPD, hypertension, diabetes, um, uh, congestive heart failure. It was, a, it was a long struggle for her. And the last year of her life was 
particularly hard. She was in and out of the hospital, nursing home, and the ER, and that kind of thing. And in January 2017, she had a near-death experience, or she literally, she flatlined for about five minutes. And I flew home immediately. I'm from Southern Cal. That night, my family, we gathered around her, about 12 of us, with her minister, with one of the nurses that was at an Adventist hospital. And we just prayed for God's mercy and grace. And that night, my sister-in-law, she said, do you notice all these rainbows? How beautiful this hospital is decorated. And as I walked out the next morning after spending the night with my mom, I really noticed the rainbow decor, the affirmations, the quotes on the wall, the staff, right? And I took a picture of one of the murals right outside the ICU. It was a mural of a, a lighthouse on a beach and a rainbow. And it had a quote on it, or a Bible verse, Job 11:18. It said, you will be secure because there is hope. You will be secure because there is hope. I took a picture because it just reminded me of home, of family, of hope. As I went downstairs and called my cousin, who's like my big sister, and we just were on the phone praising God and praying for my mom and just celebrating the fact that she was still with us. Lo and behold, I look out in front of the picture windows, and what do I see? A beautiful rainbow. And they say, it never rains in Southern California. <laughs> we cried, we laughed, we thank God for that sign, for the reminder of hope. It's another big God wink, right? Another big wink from God. There's always hope. And what a beautiful reminder then, a rainbow, a beautiful rainbow. My mom was with us almost another two months after that. And what a warrior she was. And what a gift it was just two weeks ago to travel down to Southern California as my brothers and I celebrated her life, as we began to go through the home and identify kind of what we were doing with what. And we came across this poster board that she had made of her life. Like from 20 years ago, none of us had ever seen. And what a gift it was. She talked about who she was, what was important to her, um, and what she loved most. And that was God and her family. And she saw herself as a strong black woman. I'm so proud to be her daughter. Proud to continue to see and be blessed by rainbows and by the miracle, miracles in my life. So when I landed safely on the ground for my skydiving jump, I thank God for the adventure. Grateful that I had chosen to say yes. And a couple months after my jump, I smiled as I finally had found the perfect place to live. It's just the right size, just the right place, just the right location, just the right price. And when I went to go sign the paperwork for the lease to pay with the money that I had received from the estate from my mother's passing, it was just the exact amount I needed. I was grateful already. I was like, look at God go. But when I signed and I looked behind the property manager's shoulder and saw behind him on the whiteboard these little drawings that he said his children had made in all these different colors of the rainbow. And above them I saw the name Sally, my mother's name. Oh. I'm not making this up, folks. <laughs> I knew God was winking at me again, saying, keep it up, Christy. I got you. I love you. I have your back. Don't stop jumping. Just let go. So in that moment, I smiled and I said a silent, thanks, Mom. Thanks, God, for everything. There's a silver lining. There's a rainbow. There's a miracle everywhere. I'm so glad that I'm learning more and more about the power of choosing to let go and choosing to let God. I'm grateful, hopeful, and forever faithful, and I can't wait to see what's next. Thank you. Oh,